morning and shalom from a little coffee and a lot of Yahuwah. There we go. Lovely. Today we're going to talk about the name of our Heavenly Father and the name of Yahusha, His Son. The name is a very controversial topic in the walk of the, the faith of the follower of the Creator. <clears throat> there are many versions of how people say His name. You get the way of the way that Christianity uses L O R D and G O D and J E S U S. You'll get the J W's saying it their way. You've got the Orthodox that will not say the name at all. And then you get the Nazarim or the followers of Yahusha, the branches, who uses Yahuwah and Yahusha, and there are even variations of those. <coughs> So, this becomes very difficult for the followers of our Heavenly Father. And let me assure you that His name and how to say it, we know, we can work it out. And, and it's not that difficult. It is the deceit of the enemy that will make this very difficult <clears throat> for, for those who are looking. So, um, firstly, let me read for you uh, from Abba's Word. That is the best place to be. And I'm going to read to you from Hebrews, Ibrim 11, verse 6. And it says here, But without belief it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to Elohim has to believe that He is and that he is the rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. He is the rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. You also, another translation would say, who diligently seek him. And I think both of those words are very appropriate. It has to be done earnestly and it has to be done diligently. <coughs> Excuse me. What I'm saying here is that if we are going to say, like some people say, it is impossible to know His name. Nobody knows His name. That, that is such lies and it's pure deceit from the enemy. We totally know His name. It says here, if we believe, uh, without belief, it's impossible to please Him. For He comes to Elohim, for he, sorry, for he who comes to Elohim has to believe that he is. If you believe that he is, and you believe that his word is the truth, I will show you as we move on that he says, Abba says, he has revealed his name. And Yehusha says, his son, our Messiah, <coughs> says, he has revealed Abba's name to us. If they have received it, and you believe that He is, then we must know what His name is. Let's get around the deceit of the enemy. Sadly, there are people who are teachers out there who will come to <clears throat> the seekers of uh, the truth and say, but in the words, uh, this is masculine, and this is feminine, and these are, uh, it has to be this way, and it can only be this way, because of the, the vowel points that uh, is there, and that is hogwash. Let me say why. Because in the time of Moshe, they had no grammar schools. They had no Hebrew scholars of the Hebrew language. They just spoke the language the way Abba gave it. There is no masculine and feminine in those days. Abba gave us his name. And I will show you how we will find what that is. Sadly, many people are deceived by that. And because of the Hebrew sticker 
that some people will put on or say that I am a lecturer at the uh, University of Israel or, or whatever you are saying this is I'm a Hebrew scholar a, l a language scholar this is the only way it can be well I suggest you look at what Abba gives from his word that is the only book that we need to find his truth yes many scriptures are translated obviously and there are errors in translation but the word says if you truly believe in Abba he will uh, give you what you are looking for he will give to those who earnestly seek and that's what we do we are going to earnestly seek <clears throat> so um, this teaching might go on into possibly three teachings but I'm sure you will not regret it with the information that uh, Abba gives us um, right I want to read to you from Leviticus Uh, we, uh, verse 22, uh, chapter 22, verse 2. <clears throat> and it says here, Speak to Aaron, this is Yahuwah speaking to Moshe, he says, Speak to Aaron and his sons, that they separate themselves from the set-apart offerings of the children of Israel, and that they do not profane my set-apart name in what they set apart to me. I am Yahuwah. Right. Abba says here, do not profane my name. In Shemoth 20, and we will read it later again. Verse 7 it says, You do not bring the name of Yehovah your Elohim to naught. Right, I want to kick off with those two verses because, or well, three verses, and then, but there will be more. The importance of getting his name right. It is so important that if you do not get your, his name right, it is the key to the knowledge of the kingdom. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not judging those who are so far off the truth and they seek us and they don't find it and they die and that they're not going to go to heaven. That is not for me to say at all. What I'm saying is that you need to be a diligent seeker and that you must find what his name is, which I will help you with, and he will, through his word, show us how to get it I'm again the instrument that Abba uses to give knowledge that he has allowed me to find to pass it on to you <clears throat> so let's have a look at the importance of a name I've witnessed with um, many people and often they say Oh, but he knows who I'm talking about when I tell them that L-O-R-D is not his name and G-O-D is not his name and J-C is not his name. It is what in my heart is that matters. <clears throat> well, that is sad. Because if their heart only matters and Abba does not matter, but if Abba gets their name wrong, in the scroll of life, the book of life, would that matter? Of course it will. If you are going to go and <clears throat> apply for a job, first thing, one of the first things you will fill in, or when you introduce yourself is, I am Jacob, my surname is Tack, and then you carry on. They will ask you your address, you will start off perhaps what country you live in, the country has got a name. You will say what city you live in, the city has got a name. The village that you live in, the suburb, the suburb's got a name. You will get the street name, the street's got a name. 
and then your house has got a name or a number in some cases. That's just where you live. You will go on holiday. You will find a destination where you will go on holiday. You will go to Barbados and name. You will look at the resort that's got a name. The resort has got an address and I can carry on. <clears throat> Names are extremely important because it tells us who and what you are and where you're from. <clears throat> There's no getting away from this. Again, please remember to pray for understanding of Abba's word. In Matthew 13, 19, he says, When anyone hears the word of the rain and does not understand it, the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart. Even if you listen to me, or when you read your scriptures every night or every morning, or both hopefully, <coughs> before you read, pray for understanding. Because <coughs> the enemy will snatch away. And then you will miss things out, of course. So, let's say what scripture says about, what Abba tells us about his name. We must think upon his name, we must walk in his name, we must seek his name, we must magnify his name, we must give thanks to his name, we must esteem his name, we must love his name, we must remember his name, we must declare his name, we must heal in his name, and salvation is found in his name. Do you still feel in your heart that it's not important, his name? Well, it absolutely is. So, the Creator has got a name. Who is he and what is he? It says in Genesis 1 verse 1, or Bereshith 1 verse 1, In the beginning Elohim created the heavens and the earth. It starts off with, in the beginning, the Mighty One. It tells us that the Creator is the Mighty One. And then it carries on later into chapter 2 verse 4. These are the births of the heavens and the earth, when they were created in the day that Yahuwah Elohim made the earth and the heavens. Yahuwah Elohim made the heavens and the earth. So now he's given us his name. Genesis 4.26 And to Sheth, to him also a son was born, and he called his name Enosh. Then it was begun to call on the name of Yahuwah. Right in the beginning, chapter 4.26 now, because it says here that it was be call, uh, begun to call on the name of Yahuwah, does not mean they didn't do it before. It is just recorded then. I can assure you that we read in, 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 uh, early in the Bereshith or Genesis that Adam and Hawa, her name wasn't Eve, Hawa, walked in the cool of the day. Or they heard Yahuwah walking in the cool of the day. He was walking with them. I'm pretty sure they would have known his name. Then we go on to Exodus 3.13. Now, we moving on a bit. <clears throat> Please keep in mind that this is the time when the Exodus is going to take place. And Moshe had to go to Pharaoh and, call, and tell them that Yahuwah says, uh, let my people go. But... He also had to go to the people of Israel. Because in the 430 years in slavery, they've adopted all the pagan uh, beliefs and started worshipping the pagan mighty ones. They've forgotten who Yahuwah was. Very sad. So, from Exodus 3.13, <clears throat> And Moshe said to Elohim, See, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The Elohim of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, What is his name? 
What shall I say to them? And Elohim said to Moshe, listen to this, I am that which I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Sadly, many people will say, when you ask him what is his name, they said, I am is his name. That is not his name. That is who he is. He is the existing one. He is the one that exists at all time. That will exist yesterday, today and forever. I am is who he is. Because just in the next verse he says, And Elohim said further to Moshe, Thus you are to say to the children of Israel, Yahuwah, Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Avram, the Elohim of Yitzhak, and the Elohim of Yaqub, has sent me to you. Then he says, This is my name forever, and it is my remembrance to all generations. This is so important to understand how important the name is. He says, this is my name forever. And who is he? Yahuwah, Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abram, the Elohim of Yitzhak, and the Elohim of Yaqub. This way, you cannot make a mistake. There were many Elohim or mighty ones out there that day, at that time, as there is today. But he's made it clear, this is... I am, and this is my name. And he says, this is my name forever. That will not change. And it is, it is a remembrance to all generations. <clears throat> and then in verse, chapter 5, verse 2, And, and um, Moshe said to uh, Pharaoh, or Mo Pharaoh said to Moshe, Who is Yahuwah? that I should obey his voice to let Israel go. I do not know Yahuwah, nor am I letting Israel go. And they said, The Elohim of the Hebrews has met with us. Then he understood who Yahuwah was, because he had his own mighty ones, and the Hebrews had a mighty one. <coughs> so at this point, Name points to people, who they are, Yahuwah Elohim, the Elohim of the Hebrews. So we, it gives us the people, it gives us the language, they spoke Hebrew. So this gives us identification, it gives us personality, it gives us a whole range of things that we learn through just the name. For example, think of a friend that you know well. Anyone. First the name comes in your mind, and if, you, if somebody says John, you think John, blue eyes, red hair, uh, a loud person, has got a contagious laugh, whatever. And you've got a whole lot of things by just thinking of the name. Now if I say, think of another name. Susan, different picture. Long blonde hair, uh, brown eyes. Uh, very shy. A whole lot of information will come straight away when you give a name. Right, I tell you, Trump, President Trump, you've got a whole lot of information coming in your head just by name. Another one, Hitler, even 70 years on, people know murderer of the Jews, uh, evil, and a whole lot of other things will come to your mind. Some people might even think he was great. The point is that if you say the name, you have got a lot of information you know straight away. The name is very important. <coughs> right, the next objection that we will have a quick look at is when people say, yes, but I speak English. I don't call him by Hebrew name. I use an English name. Well, that doesn't work because... Hitler, German name, everybody knows him as in German. Trump, English name or American. Nobody else in China will call him something different. And neither will people in um, uh, Korea call Hitler a different name. <coughs> <coughs> but even if, 
if that would be the case, why do they call J-E-S-U-S not by English name? Because that is a Greek name. And let me carry on. The devil is a T-A-N. That is Hebrew. Why don't they give him an English name? So that argument of saying, because I'm English, I call him L-O-R-D or G-O-D, doesn't work because they give the Messiah a, Hebrew name, a Greek name and the devil a Hebrew name. <clears throat> so, excuse me. These are all deceit and trickery of the devil that will get people not to get the name. Because the longer he can get people to worship false names, the more people he's going to have going with him where he belongs. So, <clears throat> let's read this now. Yahuwah commands his name to be honored and respected. So, let's start from Exodus 20 verse 2. I am Yahuwah your Elohim. He tells us who he is. Who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of slavery. Showing what he has done for the people. To make sure they understand who's talking. And who he is. You have no other mighty ones against my face. So the problem is, if you call him by wrong names, you calling him by other deities' names. If you are a teacher, and you, the children are a bit raucous, or a bit naughty, or a bit loud, and you call Johnny, but in your mind you have got, you thought it was Peter. You, you were actually calling it Peter, but you called him Johnny, because you just, because of the noise, you called him the wrong name. Johnny. Johnny's going to look at you from the other side of the classroom. And then yelling again at him, Johnny. And then you realize, oh, Johnny is the one sitting on the other side. You cannot call him by a wrong name. <clears throat> he says, you have no other mighty ones against my face. You do not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of that which is in the heavens above or which is in the earth beneath or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, Yahuwah, your Elohim, am a zealous El. In certain uh, uh, scriptures it will say jealous. Uh, jealous I'm not too comfortable with, as I've discussed before. So, zealous El, visiting the crookedness of the fathers to the children of the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing kindness to, the, to thousands, to those who love me and guard my commands. <clears throat> so Abba's making this very clear that who he is, and you will have nobody else but him. Only him you worship. Verse 7 it says, You do not bring the name of Yahuwah your Elohim to naught. For Yahuwah does not leave the one unpunished who brings his name to naught. Remember the Sabbath day to set it apart. First four commandments. There's only one Elohim. You have no other mighty ones before his face. You um, do not bring his name to naught. And you guard his Sabbath. Remember his Sabbath. Four that we have to stick to. <clears throat> so, to bring his name to naught. The Hebrew word is to shava. To bring it to emptiness, to nothingness. Think about this now. There are two billion Christians over the world. <clears throat> and they all call him el and G-O-D and call our Messiah, Yahusha, J-C. The Johnny and Peter scenario. They're not calling to Abba. It's a different person. If you call Abba by a wrong name, although your heart and your mind you, you call to the Creator, He's made it very clear, even in your Bibles, do not bring His name to naught. But there are translation errors talking about blaspheming, and then they say, do not use His name flippantly. That's, that's not the thing at all. That is using it wrongly. Abba's talking about not using it. So what did the devil do? He changed the name of our Heavenly Father in the Bible. Almost 7,000 times. He's replaced it with Elawadi, G-O-D and J-C. 
So every time you read the Bible, you're calling him by L-O-R-D. L-O-R-D in Hebrew means B-A-A-L, which is a pagan mighty one. G-O-D is the mighty one of the earth. It's also the mighty one of money. J-C, well, I will show you later what that points to. You cannot call him by the wrong names. <clears throat> Here's a hint. Proverbs 30 verse 4. This is to show us that man will get his name wrong. It is uh, warned us in scripture. It says here, Who has gone up to the heavens and come down? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If you know it. If all those diligent seekers or earnest seekers studying the Bible, calling him by the wrong names, it tells you, what's his name? What's his son's name? If you know it. Why? Because they will not know it. That is why that's written there. Here's another evidence that the name will be changed and you'll find this in uh, Jeremiah 23 26 and 27 where they said that Abba's name will be changed for B-A-A-L <coughs> till when shall it be in the heart of the prophets the prophets of falsehood and the prophets of the seed of their own heart who try to make my people forget my name by their dreams, which everyone relates to his neighbor, as their fathers forgot my name for B-A-A-L. Did people forget his name for B-A-A-L? Absolutely. They call him L-O-R-D, which is English for B-A-A-L. A nation not calling on the name of Yahuwah? Let's see what Abbas say. he says here. He says, Isaiah 65 verse 1. Pay careful attention here. I have let myself be inquired of, not by those who asked. I was found, not by those who sought me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation not calling on my name. I was calling Ephraim, who is scattered all over the world, not calling his name anymore, and he says, here I am, he's calling us. I have held out my hands all day long to a stubborn people, who walk in a way that is not good after their own thoughts, as long as my heart is right. Uh, two billion Christians can't be wrong. Then Abba says, the, the people who provoke me continually to my face. Listen to this. Who slaughter in gardens and burn incense on altars of brick. Who sit among the graves and spend the night in secret places. Who eat flesh of pigs and the broth of unclean meat in their pots. It's okay to eat pig according to Christianity, that is a big mistake. And I know of the scriptures in the New Testament where you think it says it's all, we can eat everything. We can talk about that at another time, but that is not the case that you think it is. That specifically is about um, not being a ra racist, because Yehudim had to look at other because at that stage, Yehudim was a selected tribe. He says you have to look... Anyway, I'm going off the road here. Yeah. But anyway, so that specific event that people use as an excuse to you eat meat, uh, pigs, is not the case. It's not allowed. So Ephraim adopted the pagan practices, as we can see, calling to other names, eating all these pigs and do other things that pagans used to do. 
And then Abba says in Jeremiah 9.13, And Yahuwah says, Because they have forsaken my Torah, which I have set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, nor walked according to it, but they have walked according, according to the stubbornness of their own heart, after the B-A-A-L, which their fathers had taught them. This is so applicable today, because my parents taught me when we went to church, I read from the Bible, I went to Sunday school, I was taught all these things, the traditions of the church, of Christianity. And it is true. My fathers taught me, my grandparents taught my parents, and so on. But Abba says, the time will come the, uh, of the regathering of his people, and they will not call him L-O-R-D anymore. And it says in Hosea 2 verse 16, and, in, and it shall be in that day, declares Yahuwah, that you shall call me my husband, and no longer call me B-A-A-L. So we praise Yah for that. I see I'm on 31 minutes, so I'll stop now and then continue uh, the second one. Shalom. Till later.